everyone. Um, excited to be here at the first uh, in-person PrestoCon. Uh, we have uh, quite the rock star uh, of a panel here uh, today with us talking about open source, uh, how to get started with open source, and why it is uh, uh, a good opportunity for women to be a part of the open source communities as well. Uh, I'm Dipti Borkar. I have been in open source for a long, long time. Uh, many different companies, uh, many different journeys, and uh, I myself have benefited quite a bit uh, from the power of open source and the opportunities it can open up. Uh, and so excited to be here uh, to talk about this. With me, uh, we have uh, Neha, Rebecca, and Rongrong, Rong, and we will uh, go through their journeys in open source uh, as well. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, the idea of this panel actually came up uh, uh, some time back as, uh, as I was planning uh, one of the first PrestoCons, and Linux Foundation has a very good uh, rule, <laughs> if you will, that you can't have an all-male panel. And uh, we couldn't actually find someone uh, to be a part of this panel, a woman to be a part of this panel that I was putting together uh, two or three years ago, and I ended up chairing that panel. And at that point, I made, it, uh, I made, I made a decision that I will have an all-women panel at some point, and here we are. So um, having been at uh, Couchbase and having founded Ahana, it's an open source company uh, for, focused on Presto, uh, it, it, there's a lot of learnings through it. But today, I want to really hear about uh, their journeys and uh, uh, learn more, have some of you hear about that. So let's get started with uh, your journey. So Rong Rong Zong is uh, uh, a TSC and a committer for Presto. Uh, she was at Meta and at Salonis right now. So, uh, Rong Rong, tell us a little bit about uh, your journey to open source, the good, bad, and the ugly. Um, okay, uh, nice <laughs> to meet you, everybody. Uh, my name is Rong Rong. Um, I started working on open source um, when I joined Facebook, actually, uh, 10 years ago, um, now Meta. Um, at that time, uh, I joined the MySQL team. And uh, I joined MySQL actually because in my um, grad school, I was working on a project and using MySQL as a you know, test payload. So I kind of know a little bit of, of, about it, and I want to learn more about database. Um, that's when I started working on open source project. And uh, I also worked on some other projects that's internal to Facebook. And when I compared the two, I realized that you know, the nice thing about working on open source is you have um, opportunities to like contribute to not just your company, but other companies as well. Like, you know, you get interaction with people outside of your, your normal work environment. Uh, so that's why like later when I pick another team to join, I joined Presto. Um, that was, oh, six, seven years ago almost. And I've been working on Presto since. Um, yeah, so that's that's my journey to open source. Great. Next up, we have Rebecca Schlassel uh, from Meta, also a TSC and committer uh, to Presto. Uh, Rebecca, tell us a little bit about your journey and uh, uh, how you got into open source. Um, yeah, I got into open source. Uh, I started working on Presto about 2015 or so, I guess seven years ago. Um, at my last company, um, uh, we started contributing to the project, um, and I guess I've been involved since then. Um, and I also really enjoy sort of being able to uh, be involved with other companies and see what areas we have in common, um, see how you know dif different ways um, of being able to use Presto. Um, for different kinds of use cases, or maybe someone else is doing something that you hadn't thought of. Um, and I also really like, um, in the development perspective, like that the whole stack is uh, open source, so that something that I'm not really working on, but you sort of see an issue in some other, some library you're using or something, and you can um, go and file an issue for them or ask questions for them um, is also um, something I, I like about it. 
Great. And uh, last but certainly not the least, Neha Pawar. Um, uh, she is a PMC member and uh, committer to uh, Pino, Apache Pino. Neha, great for, uh, thanks for being here with us. Share a little bit about your journey into open source. Yes, definitely. Oh, my pleasure being here totally. Uh, so my journey into open source started about uh, pretty similar eight years ago, I would say. Uh, and it happened very much by chance. Uh, so I joined uh, LinkedIn at that time, the data analytics infra uh, org. And I knew that LinkedIn was very big into uh, open sourcing their projects. I knew of a lot of uh, very cool projects that were born and open sourced out of LinkedIn. Uh, so I knew that I was in a good place. Uh, but beyond that, I was not being too strategic about it. Uh, I was just uh, like most of us taking one step at a time, just knew that I want to do something interesting. And there I first started working on this project called Third Eye, which was uh, open sourced, which was, this was like a root cause analysis and, and anomaly detection platform. And uh, after that, I started working on Pino, uh, which was kind of at that time the back end for Third Eye. Uh, and uh, Pino is like this real time uh, analytics database, uh, which also joined the Apache uh, family later on pretty soon. And uh, while working on these projects, uh, similar to Rong Rong and Rebecca, I really loved the community aspect of it, being able to interact with uh, other engineers from other companies who are using the code that you've put out, and then you being able to use their code uh, for your own problems. And then not just people who worked on Pino, but then interactions with other ecosystems. Like we worked a lot with Kafka, we worked with Presto folks, we worked with Flink folks, and just uh, enjoyed that aspect so much that uh, I just fell in love with that mode of working and decided that this is how I will uh, keep looking for next moves in my career. Great, thanks so much uh, to get us uh, started with that. Uh, you know, one of the things that we talked about when we prepped last week, which could have been a perfectly fine live panel as well, uh, was there are a lot of benefits of participating in open source. But whether you are a woman or a man, a lot of people still feel it pretty daunting. Uh, and so why do you think um, uh, an engineer, a budding engineer, early in their career should participate in open source. Let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, and, and I've kind of, you know, through my personal experiences at Microsoft, I work with Postgres, incredibly powerful open source database. I work very closely with GitHub, and, uh, and, I, and I see uh, the, the engagement and the benefits that it can drive. Of course, Presto and, uh, and others in the past. And so let's talk a little bit about that. E for each of you, uh, there were different things that motivated you to get into it. How did it help you, your career, your journey? Uh, let's, let's, uh, let's hear a little bit about that. So let's start this time, Rebecca, with you from the middle <laughs> to mix it up. Um, uh, what, what, are, what are the benefits you see uh, thinking about your younger self, uh, maybe eight years ago? Uh, what would you have told your younger self? <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess I've gotten a lot of benefits. Some of it, uh, like, um, this open source projects often have, like, pretty high coding standards. I had a lot of opportunity to learn from engineers also at other, um, I, before I was at Facebook, um, learning from some of the engineers at Facebook. Um, and also, like, I think some of it is inherent to open source. Like, if you're at your own company, you can be sort of motivated to, we have to really solve this, this need right now, and you come up with some kind of shoddy solution. But if you're working with a group of people and not all of them have the same business needs, they sort of hold each other to a higher standard sometimes, I think, um, which is nice. And I think also from like a, a networking perspective, it can serve really well. Your code is out in the open. Um, you can develop a reputation for yourself. Um, you can um, like, uh, find, find, uh, like my, uh, job right now that I have, um, I was able to, I, I already had a connection with people who were working at, at Facebook at the time because I was, I was collaborating with them. Um, so from a career perspective, it definitely gives you, um, an opening to, to other kinds of opportunities. Great. Uh, Neha, anything more to add on to that? Yes, so definitely plus one on the uh, networking part, uh, definitely. 
So especially for like a big introvert like me, I would never have made so many great connections with uh, other engineers and uh, just like reached out to people to brainstorm and like get feedback on your ideas. So that, that one was like a definite uh, benefit. Another one was uh, other than just the engineers, you get to interact with so many users of your project. So people who have different sorts of use cases and from different uh, sectors in tech, like finance and uh, retail. Uh, so you never think of, oh, these are the various ways that this project can also be used. It kind of broadened my worldview quite a lot and just made me like a better listener uh, because I used to interact with so many people who were in different stages of their product journey. Uh, so got better at like listening, at gathering requirements, developing customer uh, empathy. And then finally, I would say uh, just helped me become more aware of what's happening in the analytics landscape. So people, when you're working in open source, people will often ask you if you go to a conference or if you're like telling somebody that, hey, you work for Pino. Uh, they'll ask you, hey, why is this better than this other thing? Or do I need this if I have this other thing already in my ecosystem? So you kind of get a lot of exposure to people's tech stacks and start being more aware of, okay, what is the benefit? What is the advantage and so on, which was, uh, I, I don't think I would have done that if I was just working on a very niche project by myself in a company. Great, yeah, very interesting uh, perspectives. I think as an engineer looking back early days when I was uh, actively coding, otherwise you're just in your own world, right? <laughs> you're, you're, not, you're not listening to a, getting a 360 degree view of what people are actually doing with your code, how are they using it? There might be many different ways of use cases that they might be trying uh, and it, it broadens your, your perspectives. Uh, wrong, wrong, more to add to that. Uh, how do you think it has helped you in uh, being a better engineer? <laughs> yeah, so one thing about working on open source is um, you actually get feedback from some of the names that you think of, like why, or like uh, they're responding to me, you know, that kind of thing, um, uh, which is a really nice experience, right? Like you basically get feedback from like the best engineers in a certain field and uh, that helps uh, grow. And like they were mentioning like higher coding standard. So it kind of sets a good foundation to start with as your career, which it kind of almost built into a habit, which you would continue benefit without even thinking about it. Um, yeah, so that's one thing that I really think is very, like I benefited greatly from it and I only realized much later. And another thing is, um, actually, when I was working on MySQL at Facebook, at that time, I didn't like it that much because it feels very isolated from Facebook, uh, you know. But after I left that project, and what made me want to go back working on open source is a year later, the feature was more adopted by the community. And somebody just mass emailed me saying, this is the best feature I've ever ported for MySQL. And, uh, you know, like, Today, like people on um, Presto, sometimes I hear randomly from people that, you know, I'm using the feature you develop. It's like a sense of fulfillment that if you're just working on something that's internal to a company, you will never get that. Um, so that's really rewarding. And what about career opportunities, right? And uh, so we've talked about uh, becoming better engineers, working with the best in, in the space, right? Working with uh, uh, the most senior engineers as your junior, and then over time you become that senior engineer, guiding other junior engineers. Uh, what about opportunities in, um, uh, in, uh, uh, in career, right, as, uh, and transitions? Uh, any, any interesting stories there, uh, perhaps? Neha? Uh, so for me, definitely, because uh, after spending uh, several years working on Pino in LinkedIn, uh, I am now at Startry, which is like the company uh, building a managed solution for Pino. So it is the place to be if you uh, kind of are uh, a Pino engineer or in the real-time analytics space right now. And uh, I would have never been at this position as, an, as a very early engineer with like uh, all the core uh, engineers of that project if I was not actively uh, in open source and if I hadn't pursued my uh, passion for the Pinot project. Uh, 
uh, actively. And the other thing is, uh, it opened up so many speaking opportunities for me, which was uh, quite interesting because uh, I, I earlier mentioned I'm a big introvert, so that kind of uh, uh, holds you back from signing up for such things on your own. But then uh, being in Startry, the Pinot company, with um, uh, it just kind of opened all these opportunities for me. Which uh, and then that kind of had a ripple effect. So I'm very thankful for that, and I kind of attribute all of that to uh, being in open source. Uh, uh, great perspectives. It's one of the reasons I decided to have this panel in the first place is is to give back. <laughs> you know, once you once you see the benefits, you actually want to give back and take a lot of people along on this journey. Uh, and so uh, that's uh, it's it's interesting that to, to hear your your stories as well. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the challenges. Like so far, you know, it's been common across, right? Like if you're a man, woman, you don't really think about it. Uh, but the truth is that uh, there was a recent GitHub survey which said it's only 6% of women in open source compared with close to 26 to 30%, which is low as well, <laughs> in data, in, you know, in, in tech, right? And, uh, and, and I asked the question, like, why is it? It's, it's actually a great place to be because it can be pretty friendly. Uh, you just, you're just recognized by your Git handle. And if your Git handle is ABC123, then nobody can have a bias uh, uh, against that, right? The only thing that matters is how well you write your code and how well you test it. And so uh, are there challenges uh, getting into open source communities? Uh, and if not, you know, what are your perspectives uh, around that, right? Uh, is uh, if, if you had known the benefits, uh, uh, you know, would you have uh, made a different choice early on? Uh, wrong, wrong? I actually don't really have any specific experience about anything that made it harder for working open source as a woman. I think I agree with you, like, because your GitHub handle, like, you know, and most of the open source communications are actually async. So a lot of times people actually didn't know I'm a woman until way <laughs> later in the process. So it's very hard for that. It's actually harder for people to kind of bias against it. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't, I think it's actually a better platform for you to demonstrate that you have impact. And if you really want to be, you know, conscious about it and you, you like you, you, you really it's easy to hide that you're you, you don't need to mention it and people will just assume you're a man anyways you know? <laughs> just like I, <laughs> nobody would <laughs> assume you're a woman unless you tell them so um yeah I, I, yeah so i actually experienced more problem you know in normal work environment <laughs> as a woman than on open source so yeah. anything you heard about it it's a myth it's not true so, so even if you're having no issues at, in the workplace, <laughs> the open source community is actually a better place to be and more, uh, more uh, 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 you know, forgiving, if you will, and uh, unbiased, right? Uh, but there can be communities where uh, it is uh, the loudest voice wins, right? <laughs> there can be communities where uh, there are a few people who might be, and it, it, it's a, it might be about uh, not so much about bias, but about, um, uh, how they communicate, right? And so maybe, Rebecca, if you have any stories or, or lessons learned from this, uh, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I think that uh, from, a, from a community perspective, it, the, I think the key to having like a successful open source community that is welcoming to um, women or people who just might not feel quite as um, confident um, or, or at, at at home contributing to the project is really to make sure that um, it's not a community where it feels like there's just, you know, a couple people in control or where it feels like, um, you know, you have to be very, like, really aggressive to push your ideas forward, um, but one that's more um, uh, open and really interested in um, how can we make what you, how can we make you successful? Like, what what kind of, what do you, you need this uh, feature or you need, um, you want, you need to fix this issue or you're encountering something and um, the approach, coming in with the approach of how can we, uh, how, how can we work together to make that happen, um, I think is uh, the key to having 
sort of a, a welcoming community. Neha, anything more to add to that? So um, regarding like that statistic, so I was thinking that um, there's this uh, myth, like I'd like to call it a myth, that open source runs uh, because of these uh, basement hacker dudes who like you have to kind of do all this in your spare time and take like uh, like just just go enter into an open source project look at the jira just start fixing bugs and just start fixing documentation and you'll start like getting like the next kind of items and start like making your way into the project and uh, while that works and if that's kind of your style and that works for you that's great i don't think most open source projects function that way and uh, probably like only small projects or small parts of bigger projects are uh, run that way probably uh, but in so probably that is something that might be holding people back because especially like uh, the sad truth is that after a certain point women do tend to have uh, lesser spare time or we can't make assumptions about what spare time someone will have and what they'll want to do with it uh, so i th i think it's that that might be a thing that holds women back. Uh, and I, I just wanted to say that that's not the only way that you have to get started in open source. Like, you can pretty much, uh, like, I think everybody shared that experience that if you just go where the open source is and find a project there that you love, uh, then that's like a perfectly great way to get into this. Yeah, that's great. I think the, um, you know, the projects that we have been involved with are. Uh, fairly complex, right? Uh, th this is back-end data infrastructure, uh, distributed systems, databases, which are kind of non-trivial areas, right? So there are other communities that might be easier to get in, right? So there's a lot of app development happening um, with uh, frameworks and, uh, you know, APIs and all of that. So uh, perhaps if you're a full-stack developer, there's a lot more. So explore, you know, explore what's out there see what's the right fit for your background, is what I'd say. And, uh, and then for the, the data infrastructure projects, um, I think it's much harder, because there's a very big learning curve associated with getting involved. Uh, even though there are parts of the projects, like connectors or uh, SDKs, uh, where you can start with a compiler, right, or simple, simpler areas where you could start with, and then work your way up or down the stack, depending on where that is, uh, and gain more experience um, and become a core member uh, from a contributor to a committer to, uh, to a PMC or a TSC member, right? And that might be uh, the, the right way to go. Uh, that actually takes us to the next and the last question uh, for us to wrap up is, um, we've talked about uh, the benefits, right? We've, we all understand that there's career benefits, there's, there's a notion of uh, you actually can help uh, other co companies, users beyond the company that you're working on. Uh, and so what are ideas, suggestions, guidance that you can provide um, to get started? Uh, tips, uh, things you've learned along the way um, to, to get, uh, uh, do, do you recommend people move to companies using open source? Uh, do you, uh, there's a lot of a commercialization of open source. Right, so do you start up with a company that is based on open source and monetizing it? Uh, what are what are your lessons learned and ideas that you would give others? Uh, maybe Neha, let's start your way and work backwards. Uh, so yes, uh, kind of similar to what I uh, said uh, in the earlier answer that, in my experience, the uh, best way to get into this is go where the open source is, because uh, then you will just. Uh, have a job where you're doing open source and then you're going to, uh, like if, if, if you also start loving it, then you start doing the extra mile and that's like a great way to start uh, getting into like the perimeter and then go core and then keep working your way up to it. Like it's much easier, at least in infra, infra projects where there's a steep learning curve to... Where did um, you start in, in Pino? Like, just a real example, perhaps. Which part of the stack? I started on the real-time ingestion portion. So um, we kind of had Kafka ingestion, and then we wanted to make sure we were seeing from the community that, hey, there's more sources that people want to ingest from. So just bringing in the right abstraction and then making sure we can ingest from Kinesis and PubSub and... Uh, so I started from there and then started making my way uh, much 
more inside. And then just beyond that, if you do have the time, uh, attending meetups is a great way, I feel, and also um, just uh, like joining the Slack channel and just looking at all the discussions, that gives a lot of inspiration to see, oh, these are the commonly asked questions, maybe I can go fix something here and so on. Great. Rebecca? Um, yeah, I guess one thing is you were talking about how these like um, sort of data infrastructure distributed system projects are very complex and, and that's true. Um, and it takes a long time, if ever, to really learn the, you know, the whole system. Um, but you don't have to start with the whole system at all. Start with, you know, one one thing that, that you want to fix or improve or, you know, one, one small area. Um, I think the first thing I did on Presto was um, like related to regular expression functions, um, which is, you know, just, it's, it's just one, one, one small thing or, um, you know, I, I think then there's sort of one, one optimization, one, you know, add, add a connector or add, you know, add some new functions that, that are valuable to you and then just slowly you learn about different, um, different parts of the project. I've been working on Presto for a while, and one, one reason that I've been working for a, a while, and one thing that makes it fun is that I've had the opportunity to really work on quite um, different different parts of the project, so it never never got boring, um, because it wasn't really stuck on, on one area for a while. So um, yeah, you don't, you don't have to tackle the whole thing at once. And, and so there's a lot of folks on Presto over here uh, if you want to get into Presto or at least get to a committer, what would that, what would that path, uh, where would they start? And maybe some, some tips around that would be helpful. Give On how, how to become a committer? Yeah, a contributor to a committer, like getting, getting, uh, getting to the next step, the next level of depth. Right? Yeah, I would say start by making contributions to the project um, in whatever area interests you. Um, and as you sort of build more complex features, um, and also the other, and the other piece is also reviewing, reviewing other people's code, um, and sort of getting, getting into that habit of reviewing, reviewing uh, pull requests that come in, and also um, taking the feedback from reviews on your pull requests, and then, uh, yeah, once gaining expertise in that area, is then. Uh, be, become a committer. Great. Um, wrong, wrong. Any, anything more to add to that? Especially with, uh, as it relates with Presto or um, other projects, MySQL and others that you've worked on. So it's actually, um, so I, like, I was thinking when they were talking, what's my first uh, feature in, my first feature in MySQL is adding stats, like tracking <laughs> stats. Um, and the hardest part is find where that stats is outside or like in, in a huge code base, right? Like that's, uh, and my, I think my first task on Presto is fixing some errors, like error message kind of thing. So it's like very simple things. There's a lot of, like I think the beauty of open source project is um, there's a huge array of very different kind of problems. Like you can help with fixing documentations, right? There are cases that people are pinging me privately saying that, you know, this, there's no documentation for this. Um, I, I was like, okay, like, did you figure out how to do it? Then, like, can you contribute a documentation so other people don't need to ping me again, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like uh -huh. even those things are contributions, right? You can be, become a contributor that way, right? Or, like, if the error message is confusing, right, like, update it. it Everybody is free to update anything. Um, so that's really the really nice part and uh, the whole community will thank you for even making like some documentation is confusing and you make it clearer and you help a lot of people like you'd be surprised how many people you will help by just updating that um yeah so it's it's actually not that hard to start contributing and uh, you know over the seven years i from on presto i came from like fixing error messages to like you know implementing whole frameworks on, on functions and stuff right so it doesn't take one day it doesn't take one year but um find an open source project that you like and you enjoy doing and then just keep doing it and eventually you'll maybe be some person that's important in the community too 
Yeah, and, and to add to that, I, you know, I was remembering the, some of the early bugs I fixed in, in code. And frankly, the, the first bug or the first issue you fix is the hardest, right? Because you actually have to step through the debugger and actually understand how everything works. Uh, but be persistent, right? Stick through it, be persistent, uh, and keep at it, because the next one gets easier and easier and easier. Uh, and, and then um, you know, it becomes, becomes a journey. So um, thank you so much. We're, I think we're at or uh, after time. Uh, but thank you so much for being here and uh, sharing your perspectives. Uh, I hope you, some of you have learned uh, a few things along the way. And uh, we'll uh, find that uh, beginner's uh, uh, you know, issue to start with and uh, move towards being a con contributor and a committer in open source. Thanks, everyone.